Masters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman on the second day of August and we're looking at, uh, this is Tuesday, Dow's down 272 at 32,528. One of the reasons I said to subscribers to my opening call is that we're getting a little bit cautious just momentarily in the very short term because the Dow and the Chapman Wave methodology, we're always looking for Identify the lowest low bar, count each successively higher higher peak. It can go all the way from A, B, C, D, E, F, G, uh, higher peaks. But it's at that fourth highest peak when you've gone to a buy signal to a buy mode that other things can happen. And that's where we just, we, we, we raise our foot off the accelerator, hover over the brake and wait to see. And what we're looking at here is within the context of patterns, and I'll be discussing this in great detail in my webinar coming up a, a week from tomorrow, an all-day webinar. Actually, the way I've done it is so that you get my newsletter for free. And uh, we've had some really nice calls, good positions, good, very good gains uh, because we've been buying all the way up. And what we are looking at here is within the context of markets at D is where you get a little bit cautious. The MACD, the moving average in the daily chart in the Dow is very strong. The stochastic is beautiful at 94%. On balance volume is lagging. Relative strength, a little gray line over there is good. And the nine period over the 14 period moving average is very strong. And that suggests that there's internal strength still in the Dow and that that 200 period moving average of 33,170 will become a magnet if there's even a retest of the 32,972 level that was hit yesterday with a little doji candle. And I, I'll talk about candles. I have just very few specific candles that I use all the time. Little plus sign doji candle is one of them. Um, a Chapman Wave Roman candle is another. Uh, they're just a uh, Maraboza candle where there's no huge candle with no wicks not, is another. Uh, and basically we use those. Maybe there's another one every once in a while that pops up. But more importantly, it is the patterns that we're looking at. And what is the pattern here? The pattern is the large rectangle, which says, I, I took that away because it was just, uh, it was starting to look too messy. I'll put it back in just for now. A large rectangle. That suggests, oh, I've got it right here. This is what I show subscribers to my daily call every single day. Uh, there it is. And I had a left side, right side price time match lowered down. It got hit exactly. So I've extended it up. And that takes you from the high of 33,272 around about the 1st of June down to the low of 17th of June at 29,653. Uh, there's the arch pattern that was successful, the dreaded H. It wasn't the dreaded H because it was held very nicely on the right side. And then that arch becomes a very uh, powerful cup formation and says there should be a rally and that rally should take you to at least a D. Well, it took you to D with a little doji candle there. I've got a left side, right side price time match. I don't know what on earth is going to be able to do it to get the market to, to spiral to the upside tomorrow to test the Chapman Wave inside wedge target resistance line that's this little dashed green line right here which says the next area of resistance will be 33,065 if we can get there but uh, these are the patterns that we look at all the time left side right side price time match where you take the the midpoint the plumb line to be able to get that cup formation it's not always a perfect cup because the low sometimes is on the left side or the right side looks like a gravy cup more than anything else etc etc just Simple techniques. And what do I do? I also decided I would keep it right here to show you that you can do this all with just a blank. Look, a blank. I-N-D-U. This is the, the, the chart. What are the patterns we're looking at? We look for symmetry. We look for a, a bowl or a cup formation. Can you see anything that resembles a bowl formation here? Absolutely. Look, I've got nothing. I've just got these notations, the little candle here at the top and the little candle at the bottom. That's that doji candle. That's what, that's what gave us a chance 
to go long. The, the Dow, we've been going long from even before the low because some of those rallies were four, five, six hundred points. And then what we saw was this made an arch formation and held. But look at this. A simple chop and wave techniques. You can say, okay, looks to me like there's an, look, I'm visual. I see this immediately as some kind of a cup formation or a bowl formation. And that says, once you've made your left side low conclusion, and that was that little doji candle, what you've got to anticipate, especially in a market like this, is a really choppy period with higher highs, preferably higher lows, but most importantly, the wave count should take you to at least a D. Well, there's your D. Are there other techniques you can use? Look, you can just, you, everyone's got trend lines. You don't have to have, I've got, the, I've got a pattern that allows me to do a rectangle in one move. But look at this. You could say, hey, wait a minute. That, the number of bars there, and the number of bars here, look about equal. So that tells you that you've got a price time match, right? It's two bars late. And that says that this could become a breakout pattern, a very simple trend line breakout pattern. That's what I teach. You don't need to have all the, the gizmos that I have in TradeStation. Uh, you could just simply put an, a cup formation via a V. And you could do this. You could say, okay, I'm going from this side here to say that there's a there's a chance that we're making some kind of a reversal to the upside. And that just, it's the same thing. So some simple, very easy techniques that I'll be showing. This is the naked chart. And now we've just added some things. I haven't even added the chat wave notation. So these are techniques that I want to use. Now what I've done in this particular thing, I do it every once in a while for subscribers because I like to show, look, this is with the stochastic added. This is with the MACD added. This is with the on-balance volume added. And the, I put the relative strength. You don't need that at all. I use it very rarely. And here's a combination. And look at this beautiful uh, turnaround right there. Right there. Look at that. Turnaround from the, the, the V-shaped pattern at the bottom with on-balance volume. So there are all these techniques that, that are simple to use. You don't need very much. You don't need to... Uh, measure anything most of the time you can just do it visually now let's get back to our story within the context of all the different indices that we're looking at the S&P and I've counted this every way uh, that I could I thought I could be able to make a, a, an argument to say that that little doji candle was in fact a D no from that low uh, this this right here look if you go to the 30 uh, to the 3801.79 high of the, what is that, the 22nd of June, that's 0179, and the next day had 02.58. So what I do once in a while, I did it this morning in, in the S&P, I could put this as a phantom peak because it was within about a point. I could have made this the Chapway Phantom Peak and made it red or pink to say, hey, that's not a real A. Hey, that becomes a B. That becomes a C. Finally, you got a D, and all the indices have gone to a peak D at the top. I didn't do that. I'll be back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's Daily Market Newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, as I'm doing this, I'm about to go to a crude oil, uh, but a question came in that happens to pertain to the uh, energy sector. This is Alarian MLP ETF, Limited Partner Energy Infrastructure. So if you use the plumb line right here, with the gap on the left side, round about in uh, mid-June, we are just filling, almost filling the gap at this particular point. It's trading at 38.60, down 26 cents. I like, I like the way this is moving. Um, my concern only is that we've seen these V-shaped patterns in the, uh, in the weekly charts. Was that UNG? Uh, Yes, it almost looks like the chart of UNG, United States Natural Gas Fund. And that pulled back sharply from peak C. And I was talking about this yesterday, and I said, you know, this is where you've got to be a little careful. I want to see how it can handle uh, the 14-period uh, the, the exponential moving average of 2706. And here it is at 2676, and it's just a little too deep. So let me go back to the question was, if I can just find it again, there it is, AMLP, AMLP. And that's uh, right now has held very nicely after that peak C top yesterday. I like it still. It does want to fill the weekly and the daily a gap. And that's unusual. That must have been on a Monday or whatever it is, the first day of the trading day of the week, because that was already the gap. So I, I like it. The um, monthly chart says it's kind of in a holding position. And I'm going to draw this in and say this is kind of what I would expect over the next two, three weeks, that is just kind of stuck in this position. And maybe August says that um, at the end of August, instead of being at 38.50 right now, 38.60, um, it could have popped up, but the chances are that the 39 area to 37 area might be a containment uh, area for a little while, even if it pops up based on this V-shaped pattern in the weekly chart. So I do like it. And since it's a limited part, and I suspect that it gives you a really good dividend. So if you put the dividend together to where you entered, I'd say I'd still be holding it in, in this position. Uh, the weekly chart, if it can fill the gap in the next two weeks, it says, hey, it has a good chance to go to that 42 point, whatever it was, high uh, on the week of the 10th of June, 41 point, oh, 42 point 18. 
Um, I like the pattern, but I'm treating it more as a, as a dividend stock in the ch chart pattern that's formed right now as a dividend stock getting in at 38 and seeing it drop to 32, not what you want. It's getting in at 38 and seeing it go to 42 is what you want. So you want to see over the next three weeks that it holds the 36s and it has a couple of good attempts to get back to 40, over 40, to close over 40. So I do like it. I don't think I would change any position right now. If you want to add to it, I just think that you want to add to it. You see, I don't want it on a, at a peak C to take more than three sessions consolidating without testing the high of yes of two days ago, uh, three days ago. And uh, therefore, that 37.93 low of yesterday is absolutely imperative to hold because if it takes it out, I think it's going to take a little bit more time. So I would just have patience. Let's look at it again maybe in a day or two. And see how it's moving right now. I wouldn't. I wouldn't change any position. Next question I had was, and I'm going to do this as we go through the different uh, the questions. I'll do them as we're going through um, my overview. Uh, let's see. Yes, uh, S and P, AMD. Can you post Qualcam? Qualcam. I'll do Qualcom. Q C O M was acting really nicely the other day, and then it had a peak C and a pullback sharply. Uh, earnings, etc., right to the 200 period moving average. I still kind of like it. It's hugging the 200 period moving. in my webinar. I'm going to explain to you just how important uh, different moving averages are. And if you use a long term one, like a 200 period look back period, um, when it comes into focus, don't don't dismiss it because look, Qualcomm trading at 145.59 right now, down a dollar 83. Look how important it's been. Support way back in February, March, then resistance in March to April, and then it just moved far away. And then it got back, and not only did it ignore the 200 period moving average, it broke above it for one, two, three, for seven sessions. And then all of a sudden, the magnet of this 200 period moving average. I'm going to be talking about magnets. I'm going to be talking about um, how you can treat a line that's just sitting there doing nothing as absolutely irrelevant and as the price gets closer and closer what is the importance of it what do i mean by a magnet what am i mean by a tractor or a detractor what do i mean by a propellant or a repellent and that's what we'll be talking about look at this propellant zone in qualcomm when it made these multitude of of low lower lows each time it made the dreaded age failure pattern until finally it hit that number 100 about 118 and wow, it shot right up to the 155, 156 area. And now what is it doing? It's consolidating. So that's the important. So that's Qualcomm. Uh, you just want me to show it. I'm discussing it. And advanced micro device. Uh, what Qualcomm needs to do is by Wednesday of next week, the day I do my webinar, I want you to have already taken out 153 resistance and try to get to the 155 area. That'll be really good action. If it just stays around here, it has to test 140 again, and that's going to say, oops, that's the big move, and now it has to rebuild energy for a move to the upside. It's going to take a while. Monthly chart is still negative. Weekly chart did break the resistance level of the Chapman Wave inside track uh, repellent zone. Let me just move this up a little bit. There it is. Uh, and now what we're looking at is uh, that 140 period moving average uh, where the 9 and 14 period moving average are sitting, that's going to be absolutely imperative to hold. Advanced micro devices. Now, this is going to be very interesting. Look at that action today. Up 8 cents at 96.83. If you look at the weekly chart, the declining, uh, 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 diminishing cone formation saw a break to the upside. Very nice. And the MACD is positive in the weekly, and the stochastic is improving. It's not great at all. It's 42%. Monthly chart says, ugh. It, it hit 164. It had a round number open, I think it was. Uh, that was November of 2021, and it's just been downhill with lower lows and lower highs almost every single month. And now it's in a leg B to the downside, finally making a new A, a potential, but the nine period moving average has crossed under the 14. It's going to have to do a lot of work in August to change this um, A 
from being gray to blue. Actually, it's not going to change that. It's going to take a lot more than that. So the technicals are still very weak. But the daily chart says it's holding so well advanced micro devices. So these are the techniques that I'll be teaching. Look, you cannot use the left side, right side price time match with a plumb line right here where I would love to see it right there. That, that plumb line is not going to work for anybody because it's already gone too long to the right to have this as a plumb line for a midpoint. So what we're looking at is you've got to choose a particular candle. This is where math comes in and fails, and you have to use artistry. You have to use your eye. Well, I teach which candles are the most important to use, as well as the Chapman Wave inside wedge target resistance line, which would which was perfect, and then it just broke above it, and now it's testing that line. But it's for one more day to get to the target that I had of uh, 100, and we'll see what happens. Uh, two days to do that. I'll be back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. A question about TRMD, and that is uh, TORM plus A shares. Now, uh, first of all, TORM, it always looks like it should be STORM, but it's TORM, T O R M for mother, PLC. Uh, had a spectacular run from the 11 area to 17s. Uh, today it's down one cent at 17.11 in leg D, maybe a peak D. And the question says, uh, I've sold some TRMD. Where would you buy back? Thanks. So first of all, congratulations. You've really held on to this. You, you did your homework. I, I, isn't this some, some kind of a shipper? I think it is. And it's done fantastically. I believe that we're getting to a point where the ship, I wonder if I can look at DSX. Uh, don't type it in there, type it in here. And it's, I've got this as a leg F in the monthly. It could be an alternate count, but I'm calling it F for now. 
So let's go to S, uh, DSX. Kind of a nice benchmark for me. Yep, done very nicely in leg C, still looking strong. What I'm going to suggest, uh, did you say you take, took some profit? So yes, you've sold some. So I'm going to suggest T, R, M, D. I'm going to suggest that you put in a bid. You might have to split it, but at least it's a 1716 right now. My my thinking is that the whole area of 1630 to 1580, if it breaks under like 1560, then it's kind of done for this moment, and you have to wait for a regeneration of energy to start a move up. But this move can continue higher if there's just a modest pullback. 1715, I would split an entry, but I'd also be using some of your profits. So I wouldn't treat it all new money, just treat it as some of the old money that you're putting back to work, and you're trying to get it at a price that's at least 8% less than where it is right now. So that it gives you an immediate 8% uh, cushion. So this is what I'm looking at. The 120-minute chart is going to be right here. So that was a brand new buy. It goes peak A, B, C, D, reset A, B. Okay. So it looks to me that it's still holding very well. It doesn't really want to give up anything right now. So if you have taken profits off, you don't really want to get in immediately. I made a terrible mistake today. It's uh, one of the few times that I... I don't understand what I, I didn't understand intraday what was going on, but we just had to take a loss. We had a position that I loved, yeah, the, the sector and the, the stock that had represented three or four different sectors that I really liked. And because of action yesterday, because of the uh, Ukraine uh, wheat situation, that they're starting to uh, have some exporting, the price of this particular issue that we have pulled back very sharply. I had it initially as two entries, a split entry, and we got the first and the second one. We'd actually have missed by one penny yesterday, but we would still have been in the stock, and today it is up 5%, and we're out of it. And I'm so upset about that because I did the homework I made a couple of changes thinking, well, if the grain starts shipping, this one should be impacted a little bit. Maybe we can get in a second time at, at a different price. Or oh, I didn't expect to get stopped out. Well, we did. So this is the same situation in the sense that it's acting very well. I don't really want to mess around. You've done due diligence and you've taken some profits. I'm just going to say, if you're, you're, you've still got a core position, I would just put in at least one part of what you want to put back at about, I'd put the bid in at 16.21 within a, within 80 cents, I think that should be a low of this particular move and then it should try to rebound to a new recovery high that's the best way that I would do it at this particular point, but if you took money, money off as money management, which is what I love to do we've done that quite a few times in our big moves to the upside in our three times long positions um, then that's a little different. So if this was part of money management, I would say then you need to just hold off a little bit because you still got your core position. But I'm still thinking 16, 20-ish in that area is where I would start a position, maybe even a split position with another entry point a little bit lower down. But you might not even get that because it's acting so well. That's T-R-M-D. The next question I had was Visa. V. Yeah, you remember at a peak D's where other things can happen, and then what I normally draw in, you know that this is what I do. If you don't have the rectangle formation, you don't. It's not like you can't do what I'm doing right here. I've grabbed this, and I would immediately grab the outer levels of this long-legged doji here and say, hey. This is going to be trapped within these ranges. If it breaks either the upside, that's positive, or the downside, that's negative. But Visa's made a peak D. It's now below the 200 period moving average, which is, it could only be uh, above for a little while. Now it's gone back under it. The weekly chart is not that good. I think Visa is having a problem. It's trading at 204.92, down 6.37. So it seems to me that I don't know. I, I don't have a signal to say it's in a shorting or a sell signal at this particular point. It's really close, but it's really struggling. Uh, so that's Visa. I hope that helps you. Uh, bad press. If you own it, read it. Oh, oh, oh. So maybe there's a. 
Uh, okay, Visa chart not great in my uh, honest opinion. Uh, says Peaky after Zip asks about Visa, and then A to B says Visa really bad press. If you own it, read it. So all I can say is I'm looking at the chart, and, and those are the parameters. If at any point in the next week and a half it closes above 216, that's excellent action. Not great, but excellent because it's come back strongly. And if it closes above 220 in August, that's fabulous action. But if it starts to trade under under uh, 202, let's call it 200, that just says you know what. That weekly and monthly chart, the lower lows and lower highs, is telling us the story that Visa's in some kind of trouble right now, just chart-wise. Uh, next, next question is um, AZO, AutoZone, AZO. And remember, I've been talking about this for a while. I've been saying in the auto, auto parts area, when you, if, if any of you have been looking at the pricing of automobiles and what the actual, when, when you finally pay that final amount, what is the final amount? Is it way under what you wanted to pay? Is it around about what you wanted to pay? Or is it way, way over what you wanted to pay? And I suspect 2172, 20, oh, that was a C right there. I suspect that for the majority of people, especially if you're not going into this with bookkeeping in mind, you just you want that particular vehicle, that's the way it is. Then that's something completely different. Um, ABC. I'm doing this work on AZO because I, I I saw that I miss I missed a, a peak. That's your only obligation. The Chapman Wave is to count each successively higher peak. Peak F when we're pulling back in the daily. This is um, an alternate count in the weekly but at the same time, the chart is saying that it's still holding very well. I think other conditions could say AZO AutoZone could be having a, a more difficult time. And that's maybe because they can't get the parts, although the parts people are wait, keeping their cars longer. That was my point, that people are keeping their cars a lot, lot, lot longer. And when you check out the prices that you have to pay, I can just tell you that um, switching from a lease to, to owning the car uh, it could be really lucrative in the sense that you immediately have you have a vehicle that's worth more than what you uh, than what the uh, going rate for a, a comparable new car is, and uh, then you can make a decision. So after that, you've got time. You're not pressured into going to the dealer and having to do the they set. So I am looking at AutoZone, and I would just say that I think it might be stuck for a while between 2196 and 2150. Yep, I'll be back. TFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstad has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro dollar, pound dollar, Aussie dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So you can see this pattern right here. Look, I drew, you remember we spoke about this earlier on. I was seeing if I can still get there. The naked chart, this bear chart had nothing on it. And I said, what you can do is you can take uh, the visuals. It's really important. I, I, I'm very visual. I do the mathematical part, but really it's the visuals that I love. And I said, if you look at the pattern, you recognize the pattern. What's really important is there are certain characteristics. What's the characteristic of this particular chart? Well, it's making lower lows and lower highs. Then it makes a little doji candle midpoint turn around, and this turnaround has succeeded in that it's continued up and it's making almost like a cup formation. Wait a minute. Isn't this a pattern that we were looking at right here? Right here. Yes, it is. This is what we were looking at moments ago. I drew this in. Some of you doing the break saw me do it live. This is what I'll be doing on Wednesday a week. And I, I'm still making a decision whether I'm going to call it a, a trading, uh, whether we're going to have trades or not. I, don't, I have no qualms whatsoever about having the trades. Um, but I have people from all different walks of life, different uh, different areas and, and different uh, specifics in the sense that some people just love the futures. I'm doing the futures right now. Uh, look, I chose this as the plumb line in the middle to the left side number of bars to the right side number of bars in a cup formation, just like I was doing with that Dow chart a little earlier on in the naked chart. And yeah, we are. It's three bars early and it took out that left side high. I mean, isn't this just a, a great technique? I'm doing it live today. In fact, I decided I will do a Larry's show as well today, Larry's hour, not his show, but his hour. And I'll do more of these because it's so important that there's no other way that I can, that I can, there is no use me saying, oh, isn't that great? We managed to get the low in the Dow. We've got the Dow diamonds. We've been buying them for, for weeks and they're up very nicely. We've got the Qs. We've got them almost at the low and we've been uh, taking a little three times long and we've got the SOX, SOXL, three times long, the semiconductor. What's that? That does nothing for anybody who's just about to step into my opening call newsletter because it'll be fresh for them. So I don't like to just keep talking about the stuff that's been because I want to do it live. I want to show what I do actively. So yes, something I spoke about this a little earlier on. I said I could use a particular letter and use it as a phantom peak. Well, talk about phantom peaks. I use a phantom peak right here as a peak C, a little doji candle at about 9.03 this morning. Uh, why? Eastern time. Because... I said there are two parallel highs, and then I said if it goes to a D, that's fine, but there's a chap wave specificity. I cannot use it arbitrarily. I have to see a little nick, a little, a little change in one of my key indicators, uh, one of my tools to say that's legitimate, legitimate. And what did it do? It gave you a D to say, hey, that should be a C, but if you're waiting for a D, it might drop sharply before it gets there. Take some money off. See how the green line holds above the, four, the the black line. And lo and behold, it did, and it went to an alternate count, peak E. Finally got it. If you're looking at the NQU22 from, where did I type that? Uh, let me just do this right here. NQU22. 
Look, same thing, alternate count uh, right there. That did go to a peak D because there was a little nick. But look at this beautiful left side, right side price time match. And it went exactly to the moment in the NQU22 one minute uh, futures. So let me see if I... So there are people that would love to take my course, but they don't they don't trade the futures. So it's easy. Let's just say you want to trade something that's kind of aggressive, low priced, but not like the futures that, that move so quickly that it just uh, you take a huge loss if you're wrong. Even if you have a tight stop, it can keep adding up. And it's a fantastic gain if you're right. So you can do look to TQQQ. Um, and here we are. This is taken from this low. Uh, no, what, we, what are we always looking for? We're looking for a buy signal in the Chapman wave to go to a buy mode. What was the principle of this when I used to hand chart? Find the lowest low, count the peaks. At the fourth highest peak, other things can happen. A, B, C, D. All right? So let's just take this right now. The TQQQ, the three times along the uh, QQQs. Here it is, doji low. I'm gonna now. I can do this. I can make this an up arrow. I usually don't do it straight away because you, how do you know that that's really a buy signal going to a buy mode? This goes peak A, right there. That goes peak B, right there. Higher high, higher high. Peak C, and there's your D. Where does it stop? Right at the 200 period exponential moving average. Then you start another one, and then it does a beautiful arch formation. Remember, I'm all about, right here, I'm all about three patterns, straight line up, straight line down, and arch or cup formations. Well, it did the arch formation, and if I put in the left side, right side time price match, it wouldn't have worked here. It would have been great to, to give you the, the idea to go down short, but look what happened. That, that's uh, the left side, the right side. It missed it by a few bars, and that's the green. That's green because it's on the upside. But would I have chosen that, or would I have said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I can't, I can't. That that almost got there, and then that big rally said, you know what, you're probably going to miss. So I would have to move the plumb line, the midpoint of the arch formation, the left side quarrow, that's the quarter semicircle, to the right, and I would have been able to move this a little bit so that when it took out, the left side low of 32.46 and the TQQ, I would have been prepared because I'd be looking at all these different things. Look at the volume on that bar. That's that's almost like a, a climactic low when the, you get a volume at a, at a big price move down. So now what we've got is a brand new buy signal and you've gone peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D, and a PE, and then it pulls back. But the green line is still long. So it says that you could put a down arrow here, but technically it's not really a sell signal because you haven't closed sharply below the, the black line. So normally I would put that in and I say, okay, let's see what happens next because this is still acting so well. Look at that. And that would have kept you in the trade. That green line would have kept at least part of the position in the trade. Isn't that a nice technique? And now what you've got is the MACD strong, stochastic strong, and lo and behold, what is it doing? It goes peak A, peak B, and we'll come back to this for you, see if it gets to your requisite peak D because it's trying to break above the 200 period moving average. This is what I'm going to be doing live, and I'm going to be showing that it pertains to daily, weekly, monthly charts all the time. And what you want is to go from the one short term to upgrade it to, to the medium term and then to the longer term. So it could go uh, one minute chart to the five minute chart to the 10 or one minute to the two minute to the five minute to the 10. It doesn't matter. You've got a sequence that you can look at. So let me see. The wait time to buy a Toyota Sienna minivan is two years. For any hybrid Toyota, it's one year. Yeah, I, I'm hearing this all over the show. That means that people are paying absolutely top dollar. Top dollar. I know that for a fact because I was looking myself for the past uh, six, seven months until I decided, you know what? I love my leased car and I only leased it because I didn't know what would happen in the next few years, whether I would put all the changes in, in the different products. I said, I'll buy. Yeah. 
and I, I pile up. I've got all the, I've got a, a couple of lines. So it's got all the accoutrements that the new one has for a lot more, I can tell you that. Okay, VRAX is trading at 1310. I'll be right back. We'll talk about it. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month and try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Folks, we're back. And now let me just do this for one second. I'll, I'll, the last final segment. I, I will be doing the next hour as well. There's a lot to discuss here. So this is FB. And that becomes C, and that becomes D. There's your D in the E-mini. In the one-minute chart, there's your D. And it kept you in the trade all the way through. Remember what we were, D, type of D, not an E. Um, you remember what we were doing in the uh, TQQ? Look at this, TQQQ. So even as we're speaking, I think, probably going to have to do this, call it a trading session. I don't know. It's tough. But the reason is I need to be able to explain it. I don't want people to, yeah, you can make money, which is fine. But the idea is to learn the techniques. I, I'm going to practice it uh, tonight and tomorrow, and I'll make a decision whether I call it a, a trading or whether it's just plain old Chapman Wave notations and all that stuff, which we always do live and we always have really good success with it, but it's never official. And uh, look at this. Kept you in the trade, and now you're way above the 200-period uh, moving average. PT probably going to have a little bit of a digestive move right here, the TQQ. Isn't that nice? Just as we were talking, it went from... 32, um, I think it was 3280 to 3360. 
I would say that that's a pretty decent profit on a TQQ, three times long in a very short-term period. So anyway, we'll think about that. So let's go back to our story here, just as we're going to wrap up. So for this particular period, the question came in about a GDX, but also VRAX. So I'm going to do this. VRAX, I don't really want to do, I've been following it because I've seen it go by in the tick of the last two weeks, a week or two. Um, it is the V... Virus, oh, Biolabs. I think it's Virus Biolabs company. So it's an IPO. <clears throat> yes, I like the fact that it's sipping around like this. Um, yeah, this is tough. This is the responsibility here is great for me. This is an IPO. I, I can do it on a, on a 120 minute basis and make guess what I'll do a little later on. But then I'm back to the I will do I will call some of the stocks that you get from here. I get back and I do my issue. Thank you.